It was a red letter day for West Indies cricket, a historic moment after 27 years that got legends like Brian Lara and Adam Gilchrist all teary eyed. And one man really was responsible for that and brought an entire country together. A young debutant in Shamar Joseph. A debut series, his talent, his grit and the most humble beginnings has really taken the world by storm. I'm really lucky to be in conversation with the man himself. Shamar, welcome to First Sports here. Has it all sunk in yet? I'm actually happy to be here. Uh, before I start, I always want to give God the present time to know for mm -hmm. what he has been doing for me in my career moving forward. Uh, yesterday was a fairy tale. That's all I could say. Uh, I still feel like I'm actually dreaming, knowing that I wake up this morning, still wondering that we have another day to play cricket. But I didn't know that it was over yesterday. So, like, I'm still in a shock, but, you know, I'm really happy that we did it as a team. Now, what was the mood like after that victory? We saw you racing away to the ropes despite having that injury. You were, everyone was chasing you. The, the mood was great, but afterwards, what was it like at the around in the dressing room? Well, I was just trying to get into the management team. I was just trying reaching out to them because they were, they were supporting me, knowing that I was going through a lot with the pain on my toe. And, you know, I was trying to just get into them to, you know, get to hug them and let us rejoice together knowing that we did it as a team once again. You know, beating Australia for the... Uh, in 27 years. 27 years. You know, I, was, I was never born... The last time was in this beat Australia, you know, <laughs> coming here and do it for them and do it for my country, the entire Caribbean and the entire world, in fact. But there are a lot of people out there supporting me, you know, and it's amazing. I can't really explain how happy I am right now. You know, everyone was in tears. There were so many emotional moments there. Brian Rala apparently came right afterwards during the presentation. There was a lot of uh, emotions running high back there. What was the best thing that you heard? You know, you also visited the Aussie dressing room. Everyone came and sort of met each other. What's the best thing that you heard after the win? Uh, well, Bern Lara came up to me. He, he was like, oh, Shamar, you don't even know what you did there just now. You don't even have a clue, which you know, I don't. But <laughs> in other words, he was just telling me like, you know, coming out of nowhere and do this for our West Indies team. You are just a superstar. You know, you're, you know, he used a lot of words to me, but, you know, he was so happy. The tears of joy from him. He hugged me. He squeezed me. Ian Bishop, Sorka, Hupa, all these men just come. They hugged me, squeezed me. Coaches, Andrew Cody, the, the entire management team, everybody was just happy. It was just happiness in our dressing room. Uh, Pat Cummins, I went over to their side and Pat Cummins, he, you know, he hugged me and told me that, you know, if, it take to hit somebody too, and they come back and do this on the next day. He would love to get out every time he plays test cricket. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, um, I mean, for my second test match, he he showed great respect as a captain, and he, you know, he's he sit and had a great conversation with me and tell me you know how he he's really happy and you know proud that it's just my second test and coming out and do these things amazing. You know, you mentioned the injury. It was painful when we saw it on Saturday, it was, yes, uh, when Mitchell's, off that Mitchell Stark delivery, and you were not supposed to play it. Take, take us through that. How did it all pan out? Yeah, well, um, um, it's all about, I wasn't, I wasn't giving up. After I get hit, I know that I could never make it at that point, you know, because it was, I was in really pain, a lot of pain. My entire toe was black and blue. The game was flush on the toe. So um, I went off, dark clean, Put ice in it, uh, try, try, try. Nothing was working at that point. Now the tablet wasn't working. It was just hurting, hurting, hurting. I came home, take all of, all of my pillow, put it on the foot side and take my foot and foot, and I just elevated a bit, tried to get some rest. Didn't get to sleep that entire night. Until like three, four o'clock in the morning, rest, catch up a little rest, then wake up uh, the morning, still feeling a lot of pain. Uh, I just went down, get breakfast, come up back, say, you know, I'm doctor, check to me, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. Just tell him now, well, um, money safe, just relax. I said, no, I'm sure, but uh, Doc was like, uh, Shamar, I want you to come to the ground uh, for a reason. I know what the reason was, but, you know, it was for a good reason. <laughs> so I said, oh, no problem. 
uh, I cannot make it to play, but I would just still go and support these guys. So I was, I went to the ground. That come, clean my toe, give me a few pills. I drink them, and Doc strap on my toe. I say, uh, start feeling a bit better. The pain, the pain start easing, and I just put on my boots. I walk around a bit, see how I felt. Go out, bowl, even warm up. Just try to carry bowl through. Just get the bowl through. See how my toe is feeling. I was okay. I see how I feel. I will play. I didn't even walk to the ground with even my playing clothes <laughs> because my intention wasn't to play. So. Yeah, it's amazing that you know have a, have a, a team and um, that believe in you and have confidence in you, knowing that when you need it mostly, it's really amazing that you know. And I went out there with all that pain and and do it for my team and my country and the entire in the entire Caribbean. I had to get off one of the guys there to just to go out because the captain needed me to go out there. So I went out with one of the boy shirts and uh, after the over, my shirt come and. I just went off, change up so quickly, and then went on back. You know, then, you know, have, as I say, my team, they believe in me so much. They not know me for a long time, but, you know, just being in the camp and being around each other is just a great privilege to knowing everyone and, you know, what they expect of you. So, my, um, the expectation for me was quite highly from these guys, and, you know, they, they keep supporting me throughout the entire Two test matches. You know, tell us about that day itself, the Sunday, you know, uh, even on commentary, even when they were down six wickets, even when it was down to eight and still 29 runs left, of course, the commentators never gave you a chance. What was it like for you out there? When did you start believing? That wasn't in my thinking, to be fair. As I saw that I, I was getting wickets, I was, out, or I was only aiming for one thing, that we will win this. I always have that in my mind. I told the captain that I wouldn't stop bowling until the last man out. Now, even if they win, I would still be there, bowling. Let, let it come out for me or Azari, you know, or even Kim Aros or Justin Gray, because we were the first bowler there. So I told him I would hold my end. I don't I don't know why you would do that, end, but I I beg Azari, I said, please stay with me, stay with me. And Azari did that, and, you know. Having a guy like Azari Joseph, he is amazing. Mm. He's a great, what must I say? A great example of a fast bowler. Hard, work, determined to win, love to win. So, you know, um, having someone like that by your side, same thing with Kimaru. She is a legend. He is a star, you know, from since I met him over here. Yeah. Uh, he's just there advising me, telling me, keep going, young man, keep going, just keep believing. Don't be too, you know, you know, don't be too excited, don't be too, you know, he just, they always try to get me in the right frame of mind, always advise me upon doing the right things. You know, so this uh, I mean this this bunch of men here and this bunch of guys is just amazing group and family. You know, you've got to take us through the two tests. You know, there's so many wickets you took. Uh, I know Sunday is special, the last uh, the second innings at Gaba is special, but which is that one wicket that you would take back saying this is the one? I mean I know it was the f you took the wicket of your first delivery, but what was that special wicket for you? Uh, well, I'll go back to the first as much. Definitely would be Steve Smith. You know, that's, as I mentioned earlier, that's my favorite player. Like, you know, I really appreciate Steve Smith and love Steve Smith. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a legend in the making. He's a young superstar at the age of 33, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah, he is a star. And, you know, watching Steve Smith bat yesterday, even though I was born, I, I, I Hold one thing in my mind, I will get him out. I will get him out. <laughs> no, but he still can play that role. He hold until, you know, there's nothing more that he could have done. But, you know, it was amazing watching him bat, even though we are opposition. You know, I love seeing him safe bat. So, you know, I enjoyed it yesterday. It was a great game. Uh, I, I still think I'm dreaming here right now, but, you know, it's all happening. And it's happened for us. We'll, of course, keep living a lot of those moments over and over again, Shamar. But speaking of that switch between the two tests, of course, the first ended very, very um, uh, dishearteningly for all of you. But there was this moment, you know, a comment by Rodney Hogg after that first test calling you guys a pathetic team with, and had written you off. And your captain, Brathwaite, of course, mentioned that post the second test at the presentation. What were the conversations like amongst you? you obviously, he said that pumped you up. What were, how were the conversations right after that first test before heading to Gaba? 
Yeah, well, well, when we hear that, you know, that, that as Greg said, that motivates us a lot because we know that we're not, we're not prophetic or we're not hopeless. So, you know, when we heard that, that mo- it, it, it hurt, but that motivates us to show that, to show him that we could, we can do better, yeah. you know, because he, uh, he looks at a young group and, you know, feel that, you know, we, we're not here to fight. We're here to fight. We wouldn't travel all the way from the Caribbean to come to Australia to just give up. Yeah. We believe. We have confidence in each other and belief. So, you know, winning this second test match, just to prove, you know, to the world that we're here to play serious cricket. And moving forward, it will be the same thing. We're looking forward for the challenge coming ahead of us, no matter who we face. You know, it's nice to hear you say this, Shamar, but I want to take you back to your own journey. You know, we've seen and read so much about you, a little bit at least over the last few days for sure, um, how your humble beginnings were. You were in a small uh, town, you had to move away from it. How you, of course, es- escaped near death as well. You had a security officer, a security guard's role. All of that transforming to this moment here. Did you even dream of all of it? And what was that one moment that changed it for you to come to this point here? Yeah, well, um, well, when I came out after I leave my job to come on and play cricket, you know, I met with a few guys from Enjoy Young, you know, that come and watch me play and you know, see that, you know, imagine, um, you know, for Mario Shepard, he's a West Indian player, so, you know, yeah. he's someone that always tell me that I have talent, I have potential, and I could go far in this game. So, you know, he used to bring me down um, from Borby to George Young, mm-hmm. which is like an hour and probably two hours drive for training. So I used to come down with him. Then um, I met a few other guys that helped me and in terms of, you know, show me around what the cricket is like and you know how you could develop yourself and all these things. But most of in my career moving forward, I must say to Dr. Irfan Ali, mm. our president, guy and president, he is a star in the making. You know, from my first class to CPL, from CPL to Super 50. I wasn't even in Super 50, the Super 50 squad, you know, and he called. He made calls and he talked, you know, he make sure that, you know, I, I must be there. Mm. If the money had to come up from his own pocket, he would have paid for me to go there. Oh. You know, and I must shout out to him and I would love for him to hear this. I just want to appreciate the moments and the time that he spent doing things for me and will continue to do for me. He is a superstar you know, you and mentioned, a great man. Yeah, you mentioned uh, CPL there, uh, Shamar, the Caribbean Premier League for the for our viewers. Um, that was a moment as well. I mean, of course, someone picked you and spotted you. It's an interesting story. Um, take us through that. Yeah, well, it's a, um, the analyst from Guyana Amazon Warrior, Prashana. <laughs> He's all the way from India. Uh, he he is living in um, South Africa. Uh, <laughs> or can explain how much I appreciate appreciate this man around me. He's like a father or mother. Mm. He saw me both two balls, just two balls in the net, and that was it. He said, I will get you into the in team either next year, or if not, this year you will play CPL. So that same night, I went back and, you know, I come back to the game, watching the game in the stands. Kimo Paul get injured right away. I received a phone call. You have to play tomorrow night. So, you know, <laughs> that was just amazing. You know, when the president heard that too, I think like that was his call also. In my entire year. Yes. There's a lot of people that I would thank. I wouldn't be able to call everyone in, but there are a lot of people that was there for me throughout my career moving forward, especially the people from Barakar, when they heard I'm um, playing CPL, oh my God, <laughs> the reaction was, you know, it was so much joy. People that mm. didn't watch cricket came out to watch the game, stay up many nights to support me. And, you know, I will always continue to support Barakar because I know what they do for me, the sacrifice that they made. Yeah. You know, people that have their job to work the next day, they stay up like hours, all nights, they don't have to go to work. You know, so I just want to shout out to them how much I love and care about them and what I want to do for them. God will be there with me to go through this race with them. Definitely. You know, I have to sort of end uh, uh, this interview towards at least a couple of questions. One of them has to be about your learnings from your childhood. I mean, we always say that we are some total of our experiences. 
not to say you didn't want any of it to happen. All of it has led you to this particular moment. What are your learnings from all of those different chapters in your life so far? They were hard. Yeah, it's all about, you know, believing and trusting. Mm. You know, think about what you could, think about what you're capable of doing. Mm. Obviously, cricket wasn't, you know, before I, after I started working, I didn't have time to train. Or, you know, in Barakar, we play cricket, like softball, you know, we have a sport we call the um, get the ball. How the man bat, you know, <laughs> it was just amazing coming up from Barker, not knowing that they would have played for the West Indies. Never had that dream, to be fair. I was in Barker. I never knew about West Indies cricket and mm -hmm. uh, CPL and all these things. Yeah, but, you know, while growing up, different furries and different experiences come about. After I leave Barker, I come out to New Amsterdam. I started working in construction, security, mm -hmm. barbering. I did a lot just to, you know, maintain myself as a young man, try to better myself. Yeah. And, you know, while moving forward, you learn a lot. Because one thing I learned, I try to learn as fast as possible. Try to make things easier for me while moving forward in my career. So, you know, meeting to this stage today, you know, all I want to say is just thank God, you know, that he was there guiding me. I wasn't say that I was doing everything the right way, but God was still there with me, you know, helping me moving along my career, my family, my kids, my fiance, you know, my parents, uh, they didn't want me, even want me to play cricket on Saturday because we were Adventists, you know. And now, you know, you know, it's um, I'm I'm so happy for the training moving forward before I get here today because even was for my parents and the training that they give me, probably I would not be here today, you know. But I must say thanks to them for all that they have done for me and will continue to do for me, and I will be there for them anytime and always. You know, we've heard you say this also, and you've always spoken of the importance of test cricket, even at this age. You know that the world is changing. There's so much of T20 cricket. Uh, do you still say this now, at this point, that test cricket playing for West Indies is important? Yeah, uh, to be fair, this is always my dream playing test cricket. Not just test cricket, all format I want to play for the West Indies, ODI and T20. But one thing I must say, I think that this is something that, you know, being pushing us as young young men away from our cricket and our country, you know, just don't want to go after. I look, I look up to Azari, Azari Joseph. He played all format of the game and he have never missed a test match, you know. And, you know, that option encouraged me that, if you know, Azari could do this, I could do this also. You know, I want to dedicate myself to play a lot of test cricket, mm -hmm. a lot of ODI for West Indies. It doesn't matter how much, and I'll repeat this again, it doesn't matter how much it takes, as long as West Indies have cricket, I will always make myself available. Because I think West Indies cricket get us to all these leagues and, and all these things. So this is where it starts, so this is where you have to come back. This is where this is the the mother art for us, West Indies cricket. You know, I look up to Mitchell Starr. There have been years that he, received, he refused IPL contract just to dedicate yourself to Australia cricket, you know, and I want to use that as a role model for me moving forward in my career. You know, we obviously want to wrap up this interview, not keep you here too long, Shamar. What's the one thing you want to tell others, many youngsters like you who think it's a big struggle and think it's nearly impossible to play for your, for your country and to move up, your, move up the ranks in international cricket? What would you tell them? As long as you have self-belief, and people believe in you also. Things could always happen. So the moment that I get into team, I told a lot of those guys, see, I gave myself two years to play Guyana cricket and I'll play for the West Indies. It even meet a year properly I'm in the West Indies team. So, you know, it's amazing. It's really amazing that, you know, I'm here today and I will continue to be here by God, Chris. All right, Shamar, it's been a pleasure really speaking to you. Thank you so much for giving us your time. And of course, the world is watching you. All eyes are on you and we'll see how and where you head from here. I'm sure you'll impress us and keep doing so in the years to come.